Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so in this lesson, we're gonna look at something which I think is really cool. In fact, it's one of my favorite features of Vary Audio, which is the formant shift uh, function, which we got, which we talked about briefly or touched on briefly in the last couple of lessons. And you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a bit of a sort of useless effect. Just stick it on this vocal here and crank it up. Uh, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that wasn't uh, particularly useful, but actually what I'm gonna show you is how to use formant shift or a subtle bit of formant shift to start off with and how to tweak the performance and actually sort of change the feel for the way that the song is actually sung. So you can use it as a performance sort of enhancer, if you like. And then after that, we're gonna look at sort of some more, slightly more extreme ways of using it, but how to use it in a, in a really sort of cool way um, to tweak certain bits of your track just to make it a bit more interesting. So let's first just have a little listen to this vocal. Um, now I want you to listen to it just so you can get a feel for sort of how it's sung, where it's going. Uh, it's only been basically pitch corrected. It hasn't had any uh, particular processing or anything like that going on. So it's, it's pretty raw at the moment, but I want you to get a feel. So when we start tweaking this performance, you're in a better position to sort of understand what's happening. Okay, so you got a sort of general feel. It's a pretty chilled track, um, just a bit of a beat going on behind here uh, and some sort of orchestral type sounds. So the vocal we've got, it sounds, for the most part, it sounds all right, but we can go through and actually just give it a bit more energy in certain places by changing or messing with the formant. But we still have... So I think that hate is a bit soft. Still have... So in the last part of that, so I'm just gonna add a bit of form and shift to this. Um, now the thing with form and shift that you've gotta know about is that if you're going anything sort of over 10 to 15%, it's gonna be really obvious um, that you're using an effect on there. You can tweak it subtly, which is what we're gonna try and do now uh, without having it really noticeable. Um, but if you go much over 10%, it's going to be noticeable. And we still have just a little bit too much. And then without. So just adding, it almost sounds like we're adding just a bit of warmth to it. What if there was only one? This starts off just a bit sort of slightly weak. What if there was only So I'm gonna select the first three, I think. What if there was what if there was, so for, beg your pardon, um, and just up the formant shift a bit. Let's go again for about 8%. What if there was only one? And if hopefully, if you can hear, I'm just gonna play it a couple of times. I'll try and do it without talking in the middle so you can sort of just hear uh, the difference. And it just brings this first part of the phrase up to where the second part of this phrase is. What if there was only 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 I think 8% was probably just a touch too much, but you get the idea. It just brings it so it actually sounds more in line with the rest of that phrase. It just starts a little bit weak. Um, by using formant shift, we can sort of tweak that and give it just a slightly kind of more intense sound. And we are, it is super subtle, but you can use this definitely to uh, tweak vocal performances and just get the absolute most out of that particular performance. What if there was only one? So it can be used very subtly just to tweak the intensity of the performance. Okay, so let's have a look at some more creative uses. And for that, I need to jump into another project. Okay, so this track is actually from our recent Cubase 10 liquid drum and bass course. And I just want to use it as an example because it's one of the better examples that I've got um, of how to use a formant shift as a sort of creative effect. So I'm just going to play this chorus here and uh, just listen out for the sort of subtle tweaks 
uh, informant. It should be fairly obvious, but have a listen through and then I'll reset all the formant values and we'll go through and actually sort of recreate what I've just done. Okay, so have a listen to this. Obviously concentrate on the vocal. Just to embrace you, I'm strong Okay, so that's should be fairly obvious where that is happening. So I'm gonna go in and reset all of the formant values back to zero, and then we'll go through and recreate it. Okay, so let's work through this. Just to embrace you, I'm strong. Okay, so the first bit of formant tweaking happened here on this little phrase. Strong and we just sort of embellished what was already there. So it's obviously going up in pitch and sort of therefore up in intensity. So using form and shift, we're going to sort of just embellish this a bit more. So uh, we'll start off with the first word. Uh, now this is a, a way that I found really works is sort of gradually going into the form and effect. So we start off slightly gently, let's say on about 8% for that one. And then on this one, let's go up to, let's say 18. Let's try that anyway. I'm not sure if this is 100% correct. Uh, and then we've gone back down in form once we've gone down to this note here. So we've gone from zero formant, 8% formant, 18% formant, and then 11% formant. Now, I'm, I'm not being accurate with these figures, obviously, uh, but let's have a listen to that. Just to embrace you, I'm strong. And you can hear it just makes it sound more intense as a bit of an effect. It's a bit more interesting than what it was, which is this. It's just a nice effect and it really works in this track. And let's just carry on. So we've got uh, two sort of phrases that work together here. We've got this one and this one. So we're going to tweak the sort of second part of this and leave the first one untouched. So we're just going to mess the format with this. Obviously, you don't want to go too over, over the top with these effects. You want to uh, work out decent places to put it. So obviously, leave leave gaps of where it's completely not formant shifted at all. And then obviously, you can have a section where it's formant shifted. Uh, so let's just go through. Let's just whack this up to start off with. And we're going to go up again here. Start off gently again, like I said, and we're going to sort of raise the formant shift up each time we go. So we've gone from 7%, 15%, 25%, and let's go right up to like 40% for that last one. Then we're going to drop down, uh, not have the formant shift on, and let's just do these last two, uh, and these can go down instead. So let's go 21 and then minus, just try 40. Let's see what that sounds like. And you can hear, it's just a really cool way of sort of messing with the vocal uh, and making it a bit more interesting really throughout the track. Now, I'm just going to play this last section. I'm, I'm not going to go through and actually um, tweak these settings, but we can see very clearly where we're using formant shift. So I'm just going to sort of go through and show you what I've done. Again, we've just started off very low on this one about you. and sort of gone straight up. It almost makes it sound like it's uh, being sped up on a, on a record uh, deck or something. So we started at minus 53% and then graduated again back to zero or minus six there then zero uh, so that's all going up in formant from being very low then we carry on and we're going straight actually sorry we've carried over so we've gone to zero and then we're going up so it's just a complete graduation up to that point and it looks like we've gone back to zero and then up in 
four minute for that, quite high, 46. Think about you all the time. Uh, minus three there, minus 19. So again, we're now we're going down. <laughs> Uh, and that that's how I've managed to make form and shift work for me and that is just just by stepping it gradually using the different notes that you've got and adding form and shift gradually Think about you all the time. And, you. and obviously this whole phrase has just been shifted right down so we've gone right for a minor 78 uh, form and shift on that and it's just given that really sort of nice uh, quite modern sort of pitch down sound It's not really pitched down, it's just formant shifted, but... So that's it in a drum and bass track. I just wanted to show you that, and sorry if you've already watched the Liquid Drum and Bass course, because obviously that was covered in there as well, but it is just an absolutely great example of where formant shift really works. And I'm going to show you one last example, so I'm going to jump into another track. Okay, so here we are in the last track. Um, this track's called Do It With Me, and basically I used vocal samples from Loop Cloud, uh, which Jay talks about in the new Cubase 10 Deep House tutorial. And uh, this is just sort of get the creative juices flowing type thing, so I ended up using a sample, which I don't normally do, but I just love this sample so much, it just worked perfectly. Uh, it was actually a female vocal, but it's been pitched down, um, and it just sounds really awesome. So I'm just gonna play you this first sort of chorus section, and hopefully you'll hear where I've actually used used the form and shift feature and then we'll just look at the the settings for that and and what I did in a bass line for some reason. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just go into the vocal. I like it how you do it me. So this vocal has been, uh, this first, very first vocal section has not been tweaked uh, very much apart from the last word, just that me, which you can listen to. I like to. it how you do it me. Just me has been tweaked slightly with a higher intensity of formant shift. Do it me. Just to give it that slight sort of uh, intensity that it doesn't have before. Do it me. Just sounds almost a bit flat with the uh, form and shift, it just adds a bit of extra Do character. Then on to the next one. I like it how you're on me. So again here, you can hear it sort of graduated there, so it starts off with no form and shift. Sorry, I'm looking at this value here, of course. And then as soon as we get halfway through, we've gone right up in form. So we've gone up to 37%, 43%, 0, 0, 0, 0, 21, 0. So it's just been used. Obviously, I've just gone through and just chosen where I want to add the effects. I like it how you're cheating on me. Again, on the me and that, and just to sort of tweak the sort of sound. I like it how you The how you obviously is uh, just tweaked and then I've used the formant shift on that and you can hear there very easily it's graduated completely so I've started off high uh, 50% and then I've just gone down 36 minus 4 minus 14 minus 39 so I've gone from high formant to low formant <laughs> and you can hear the effect of it there. Uh, so one last thing that I will talk about is obviously, you know, I can talk about using formant shift, you know, like, okay, that's great, but how do I sort of work that into the arrangement of my track? Well, just like where I showed us using a uh, graduated sort of formant shift, so we'll get starting off gently and then getting more extreme, whether that's going up or down or, or from plus to minus, you really want to choose the sections in your track wisely. So let's just very, very, quickly look at the way that this sort of section is uh, done. So in this part of the vocal we've got very little form and shift, there's just that one tiny bit on the word me, so it's only being used once. And that's the first four bars, then we've got the second four bars, which obviously in total is eight bars, which is a complete section. So in the second half of this complete section, we've got this vocal, which obviously had a form and shift in the middle and on the me as well. So it's got slightly more. 
Then we've gone back down to actually having very little form and shift. So it's just on the me again there. And in here, we've got more extreme as it's building up to the end of the section. And at the end, we've got really extreme uh, form and sort of shifting going on. So just like anything else in your arrangement, you really want to keep it in sections. You want to you want to keep the sections interesting. And at the start of a section, you can keep the effects slightly minimal and have more of an effect at the end of a section, at the end of sort of, uh, you know, either four bars, eight bars, 16 bars, etc. And then it's going to sort of work with the structure of your track. It's also going to help the track flow because it's sort of bringing in a sort of slight tension at the end of the sections before there's a change or, you know, whatever it is that's happening. Now, one last thing. Uh, so obviously that's talking about it on a section level, but what about on the whole song level? Um, well, I'm not going to play the whole track, but what I found really works is using formant shift for effect in certain sections. So I've chosen to only use formant shift in this track in the verse sections. In the chorus sections, I actually leave the vocal as it is. I believe I may have added just a tiny, tiny bit of formant shift here or there uh, just to sort of tweak the occasional vocal maybe right at the end of the chorus. But generally speaking, I've avoided it in the chorus sections and only used it in the verse sections. Now, the reason for this, my reason for doing this, is that you want to create contrast between the different sections of your track. Now, I talk about this a lot in the mixing EDM masterclass. Uh, and, you know, to keep the track interesting, to keep it ticking over and always moving forward and getting the right energy for your track is so important to create contrast between the sections of your track. Obviously, you want them to, you know, sound like they're of the same track, of course, but you do want to create a, a difference between the sections. And using formant shift on the vocals only in certain sections is obviously a good way of doing that as well. So it's just another sort of string to your bow, if you like. Okay, so that's enough for this lesson. I just wanted to cover that in, uh, in all the sort of different ways that formant shifting can be used. It is a really awesome tool, so I do advise you to get stuck in, just start using it, just start messing around. Um, you're going to find ways that I haven't even shown or haven't even thought of yet uh, to use form and shift. I'm absolutely certain of that, that there's a lot more possibility there. But hopefully what I've given you is going to give you a good foundation that you can start sort of tweaking in a direction that's actually going to work for you. And you can take it from there. So I hope that was helpful for you. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it. And if you want to get a much deeper understanding of vocal recording and mixing, then check out our full course on exactly that. It's over five and a half hours spread over 34 lessons on everything you need to record and mix great vocals every time. Thanks for watching guys and girls. I'll see you in the next one.